Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So one question, um, this was uh, asked actually one of the in one of the interviews. The question is really good actually. You have to download the file with the help of the Fluent Wait. So the question is that when you start downloading, right? So let's see for the around 100 MB file or 90 MB file, it will start downloading. So we have to make sure that the next action has to be performed once the downloaded is completed, like 100% completed. So we don't want to display a message that uh, just click on the link. It will start the downloading. After that, Selenium does not have any control on that, right? So for example, let's see if I uh, go to this particular uh, URL. This URL will give me one Jenkins.msi file, which is around 100 MB or 90 MB. If I uh, refresh this, and it will start downloading. See, it will start downloading uh, somewhere over here. You can see that. So now Selenium cannot control this because this is a desktop of, you can say that it's getting downloaded and it will be there in my download history. And then it's taking some time. See, it took around seven to eight seconds of time to download the entire file. So Selenium cannot decide that the file is completely downloaded or not, right? But with the fluent weight, we can do this. So what we have to do that, uh, it's a very good question. So let me do one thing. Let me see this already there in my downloads folder around 95 MB. So we will start the downloading and we will hold Selenium with the help of, uh, we will hold the script dynamically with the help of uh, fluent weight. So once the downloaded is completely done, then we will make sure that, okay, yeah, then we will proceed further that yes, downloaded is completely done. Then whatever you want to do with this file, you want to read the content or you want to execute this file or anything, you can do that after that, right? So I hope you got the scenario. Generally, what happens when you click on the link and when we see if I'm launching this URL, let me just comment it out this one. I'm just launching this URL. So, and then I say that, okay, system.out.println, that file is uh, downloaded. If I'm writing a plain script like this, so let's see this line will start downloading and then you observe the behavior. The browser will be launched. Okay, the Chrome browser, let's see, is getting launched here. And uh, you see this, this is still downloading, but if you open the console output, it says file is downloaded, but the file is not downloaded completely. So tomorrow this file, it could be 500 MB also or 400 MB also. So right now it is just started the process. It is firing the download event and uh, file is still in progress. It's not completely downloaded. So that's the scenario. We have to wait for some time. Sometime means once the file is completely downloaded, then only we have to proceed further. So this is not the right way of doing it. So what we can do, we can use the capability of uh, fluent wait. And uh, generally what we ha what happens fluent wait, we use it only for the web driver, like uh, web driver uh, generics, right? What we do that, Generally, what is the syntax of the fluent weight? We write it something like this. We create the object of fluent weight with the web driver weight interface type casting and a couple of other options methods are available like timeout, polling time, ignoring with message. And then we put one condition here as well, right? And then the generics type is always we write web driver here. But if you see the definition of the fluent weight, this is actually, uh, if you see the class implementation, the fluent weight T is written here which says that it could be the input type, the generics could be of any type, not only for the web driver. But generally what we used to do that because we are going to use web driver because of, we have to interact with the browser or maybe some JavaScript or maybe some page elements or pages so that we can interact, we can wait for the elements, we can wait for the, uh, some images or buttons or anything, or maybe we can wait for the pages. So that's why we generally we supply the web driver here because web driver can control the page. But right now we are not controlling the page. We have to control the file. So for that purpose, what we have to do, see this carefully, we are going to create the object of fluent weight. So let's create the object of fluent weight. Weight is equal to a new fluent weight, but the type that I'm giving is actually a file type because we have to interact with the file. So both the sides file type that I'm giving. And this, this is my download path that I have already created that I want to download in my downloads folder because by default it's actually downloading in the download folder. If you really want to change the download folder path also of the Chrome, you can use the Chrome options that you can do it. So by default, let's say I'm using downloads. It is going to download there. And this is the file name that I have just created one Java file object. 
with the download path and the file name and the same file object that I'm going to give it over here. So what exactly I'm going to do that in that case, I simply say that, okay, yeah, this is a file object that I'm going to use it here. And the fluent way that we have to import first. So let's import from Selenium. So once we get this, now I can apply all the methods. That first method that what exactly you want. So I want that the, the total timeout. Okay, with the timeout, I'm saying the duration dot of, let's see, minutes. I can use it here, not seconds. Why? Because I know it's a quite lengthy file. It depends tomorrow network is very slow or browser is very slow. Server is very slow. In that case, I need at least five minutes of time to complete the download maximum five minutes. If before five minutes it's done, then a uh, dynamic wait, uh, ignore the rest of the seconds. And then if I really want to define the polling time, so that also we can do it. So let's say I'm saying a duration dot of a seconds, you check in every five seconds the file is downloaded or not that also we can do and then i'm writing that if case of any kind of uh, uh, exception which is coming let's see file not found exception or anything it could be anything so i'm writing exception dot class also here not no such element exception because it's nothing related to the element here and then if after timeout also a file is not completely downloaded then i can put a message here that a file is not download it something like this that i'm writing it right so this is a weight definition with the fluent weight with the generics of file that i have created now what exactly i'm going to do that weight dot until now with weight dot until generally what we do we use expected condition right always in selenium which is already there but if you really want to use expected condition then i cannot handle any file operations because all these methods selenium guys that they, they have given they are related to the elements, pages, and uh, any kind of browser action that you really want to perform or visibility or URL, title, frame, alerts, for all those things that they have given the methods. Nothing is related to the file. See, that expected condition that file is really downloaded or not. As such, we don't have any condition for that, right? So what we have to do, we cannot use uh, expected conditions. And if you see the signature of the until method, it says that, okay, it's giving me the function. So if you see the implementation also that, okay, fine, which is a function interface it's taking, and then it's uh, representing one predicate, I think. And then it says that, okay, fine, it should be a true, right? So what we can do here is uh, we can just create one, let's see any element or F uh, parameter. And then I'm writing that F dot, and then see this, this F is actually representing what? This F is representing the file object. So I simply say, okay, fine, that F dot uh, exists or not. That is first Boolean condition that I can write it. And, and, and then I can write that it can read also. Can we read that particular file or can we execute this file or not? That also we can do that. So if it is there, so wait dot until method will return what wait dot until method will return a boolean and then i can do one thing i can just store it in some uh variable is downloaded is equal to not okay something like this so wait dot until method will check whatever the file is exist and it we can read also here and then i'm writing one simple if that if it is downloaded then do what then simple writing system dot or print ln the file is successfully downloaded or instead of successfully, I'm saying completely downloaded. Okay. The file is completely downloaded else system dot or event Ellen, not completely downloaded. Okay. Or I'll do one thing. File is completely hundred percent downloaded. I'm writing it here. So see this carefully. The ready, the code is ready. Now I'm running my script. Okay. So now let's try, let's run this program and let's see. Okay. I'll do one thing. Some browsers are already open. Let me close these browsers. Okay. So I'll open the console and then it will launch the browser. It will start the moment it will enter the URL. It will start downloading and see, I'm not getting any message here. Can you see? Once the downloaded is completed, then only it says file is completely downloaded. This is so nice. This is what we were expecting, right? That wait until the file is 100% downloaded. Then only you have to show the file is downloaded or not. And you can in fact go and check 
in my downloads folder that file is really there or not so you can just simply go to downloads and this file is there okay let's run it again so let me just move to bin and then run it again okay so i'm just going to launch it again so that's why you can check the scenario when you have a heavy file like 100 to 100 mb right now this file is around uh, 95 mb see the moment see it started downloading although my internet speed is really good now the file is completely downloaded it's showing done then only it's saying file is completely 100 percent downloaded and the timeout that we have given only five minutes here now let's do some negative testing also that let's see we are expecting duration dot of uh seconds i'll say no it should be downloaded within two seconds okay let me remove this and the duration of second i'm writing that's let's see uh within 0 0.5 second but 0 0.5 it will not take so what we can do duration of milliseconds we can write it here in millis let's see i'm writing that um let's see only 200 milliseconds is the polling time it means in every 200 milliseconds of interval go and check file is there or not but within two seconds it should be downloaded and we know that this file is taking around four to five seconds so in that case let's see what happens so let's uh, run it. Let's see what happens. So is downloaded is giving you false or it will give you exception. Let's see. Maybe it will give you timeout exception. Let's see. Okay. Oops. Oh, one mistake. One mistake. We have to delete that file first. Let me just delete that because the file is already there, right? So it's already checking that file. It is already there. Let me remove it and run it again because the in the last execution, the file is already downloaded, right? So let me open the console. Browser is there and see it has started downloading. We are expecting to download within two seconds, but it's taking more than two seconds. So see, it's giving me the timeout here, right? Expected condition failed. File is not downloaded. And uh, it says that we tried for two seconds with the 200 milliseconds of interval. Got it? So in that case, what will happen that this line will give you what an exception. So it will not come inside the else part. So whatever the message that you have given, it will give you that particular message there. So there is no point of writing this else. So let me remove this else. So what we can do here is that this line is a culprit, which is giving me the timeout exception. So I can uh, write this thing in the try catch block. Okay. And then I'm writing another catch. And then I'm saying that if you are getting the timeout exception E and then the message, the else part message that we are printing, right? That we will print it here. That file is uh, not downloaded. Okay. Or not completely downloaded. So this is the code that we can write here. Okay. Three messages with this. And uh, now let's run it. So again, we are expecting to download the file within two seconds, but obviously it will take around four to five seconds. So now it should come inside the catch block because line number 30 is giving me the exception, timeout exception. And then we are handling in the catch block here. So see this, now we are expecting to download the file within two seconds. See, it's taking time now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. But before that itself is saying file is not completely downloaded. Perfect. So this is what we can automate, uh, you know, this thing. So fluent weight is not only for the uh, web driver weight. You can just apply for, uh, you know, any object, any Java object. You can apply for that. You are waiting for the file. You are waiting for some, some process to be completed, waiting for the elements, waiting for the pages, waiting for the browsers, waiting for the files or, or any process, which is taking some time. And dynamically, you really want to wait for that. You can wait for this. And this download uh, directory, you can always uh, change with the Chrome options that uh, for that uh, the one video is already there on my channel. So you can just go and uh, go through with that. So I hope the difference between web driver weight and the fluent weight, uh, you got it because with the web driver weight, you are not getting this flexibility. Web driver weight does not have any generic type. It's the given with only with the fluent weight. Okay. So thank you so much. Please use this scenario. I'll share this code in the Git repo somewhere. And then it's very straightforward. You can just uh, copy paste from there or you can just write it from the video also. Thank you so much guys.